Hello friends, I hope everyone is doing well. If you're new here, my name is Michael, I'm known as the Brooks Brother, and thank you for joining. I'm coming to you today with actually no makeup on to begin with because normally I come with a look finished so you can see what you're getting into, but I'm just gonna start with nothing today, you know, switch it up. But I probably look a little bit different. I got some hair <laughs> and I'm usually rocking like a slick bald head, but I'm growing my hair a little bit. But this is not about my hair. This is, uh, this is about makeup, obviously. So, I'm doing a full face of almost entirely only one brand, um, which I don't do that often. It's a brand that I, I would say before the last three months or so, I didn't have a whole lot of interest in using or trying. I just felt like their demographic and their brand identity and image was something that was like very far off from what I do and what I appeal to online. But recently, I've had the opportunity to very kindly be gifted, a well, enough to do a full face of makeup with this brand and it's a really nice brand it's charlotte tilbury so you probably guess that from the title of the video but it's actually pretty exciting for me charlotte tilbury if you're not familiar which i'm sure you are but it's a mid to high-end makeup brand and it's relatively new charlotte tilbury has been doing makeup herself for a very long time. Big name in the makeup world as a makeup artist, but her brand is actually a more new brand. So they've done quite a lot of development over the last couple years, I would say. Development in terms of like fleshing out their range, bringing out more shades, more variety in products. I've been trying it, like bits and pieces of it for the last month or two months and it's all fantastic products. So I'm excited to share my experience with like using everything in a full face where as you can see it all kind of come together. Just so you know as well, this is not a sponsored video. This is not a paid advertisement. This is just something that I thought would be an interesting video to make and an interesting video to watch. Someone from my perspective and my presentation that isn't necessarily the Charlotte Tilbury, maybe what you would think of when you think of like the, the Charlotte Tilbury sort of consumer. I've seen some stuff on their website that, you know, they have a couple men in their advertisements and like, I think they're sort of branching out and trying to be a little bit more inclusive of everyone, which I think is really cool. So uh, anyway, I just thought that this would be an interesting video to watch. If you enjoy makeup videos and listening to me talk and learning a couple things and maybe discovering some new products, I'll ask that you please hit the subscribe button below. I'm trying to grow my YouTube audience make this another platform that I use really regularly. It's something I'd like to be able to put more time into, so if I could grow my family on here, that would be amazing. I'm gonna do my eyes first, but I'm gonna prep the skin a little bit before. I have done my skincare already, so I have moisturizer and SPF on. I am going to use Magic Cream from Charlotte. Um, just to prep my skin, I have oily skin, and this is quite a rich textured product. I have to be careful how much of it I use. I don't really need to like double moisturize, but it does really prep the skin so beautifully and gives it such a nice glow, so. Just gonna warm it up with my fingers. Magic cream smells so nice. And I'm just gonna leave it while I do my eyes. It just needs to like do its magic. <laughs> I've already done my brows. They're mostly black, but there's a little bit of blonde in there. When they're like this, I like to lay it flat. I use this got to be glued spiking gel and I brush it up and then I lay them flat. There's a whole video about it on my IGTV where I talk about all the steps. So if you want it, I will link it below. I've got you zoomed in so you can see my eyeballs nice and clear. I don't have an eyeshadow primer from Charlotte Tilbury and I don't know if, they're, if they do one, but I'm just gonna use some concealer. This is Magic Away concealer. It's like this little sponge tip and you give it a twist. You know how these things go. I get some on my eyelids. It's nice and bright, <laughs> but it will help with the eyeshadows all standing out. And I'm just using a fluffy brush to kind of tap it on. You can see I have this lovely breakout right here. Yeah. I think it's just like stress and just kind of happens. <laughs> and I just have to leave it. For eyeshadow, I have these two little quads here, and they look like this. I think it's like their fall collection or like pre-holiday or something, but it's like these rose goldy kind of coppery colors. And it's called Walk of No Shame, and it's from like a whole Walk of No Shame collection. And this has been out for a little while, this is called Desert Haze. It's like your classic warm neutrals kind of palette. Matte and shimmer. I put them both up on my Instagram story, and I actually got a 50-50 vote. It was up for like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I'll do this matte brown one because 
The last makeup look on my YouTube channel is like a rose goldy pink. I'm gonna be so stereotypical and be like, ooh, matte brown eyeshadows, let's do a 90s look, but I think it kind of has to go that direction. Having a matte brown eyeshadow look, like knowing how to do that, it's a useful thing to know how to do. And I feel like so many people have a eyeshadow quad that has brown eyeshadows in it that they don't know what to do with it, so I think this is the right decision. <laughs> 217 brush from MAC, go into Enhance. Lining my cre Ooh, that's pigmented! <laughs> I'm just gonna start defining my crease kind of in the center and I'm just tapping it on back and forth. I'm not gonna follow the steps of like prime, enhance, define, smoke, all that business. No. I'm gonna use these eyeshadows how I want to use them. <laughs> and you're not gonna tell me how to use them, Miss Charlotte. Okay? Thank you. I feel like I see certain arrangements of colors and I just know like, okay, this is what I'm doing with it. <laughs> and you can't stop me. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess eyeshadow from the brush. Really buff it in. So now I'm just going back over it and I'm just adding a little bit more of that same color. It's actually on my brow bone and I'm keeping it nice and high up. This eye is gonna end up being quite feline looking. Tilted up on the outer corner, pressing it on a little bit higher on the outer part of my socket and not going as far out this way and not going as round here either. So keeping everything right there and higher. The color right underneath. And it's a similar shade, it's just slightly deeper. I'm popping that on the lash line here and I'm winging it. So the placement of this is quite important on my eye shape because my lash line comes to the side and goes downward at the outer corner. If I bring any dark colors too far out, it downturns my eye, which I don't mind, but for something like this, I want to kind of keep it up. I'm not bringing that, that shade all the way out to the outer corner of my eye, just to create that illusion that the outer corner is actually more upward turned. And I'm also bringing it up past my natural socket line. With what's left on the brush, bring it onto the lid as well. Gonna mix a little bit of that first color in over top too. And shape of brush that you use for this part isn't super important. This is a ColourPop E21 brush. As long as just it's small enough that you can, it doesn't blend out the eyeshadows too far when you put it on. Like it needs to be small enough that you can make a shape with it that looks somewhat defined. And then when your eyes open and looking straight, you just see the darkness on the outer corner, but it doesn't come too far out or down. And again, with what's left on the brush, at the top, I'm going to start pulling it across the upper part of the socket. See how it's kind of almost creating a really soft cut crease? And we're leaving this space here open. I'm keeping a very clear boundary of where the color is on the outer corner here. I'm going to switch back to my fluffy brush that now doesn't really have much on it. I'm just going to gently buff out the edge. Not adding any color here. I'm just using the brush to soften the edge. But this is where we're at. I'm just gonna deepen it a little bit more. I'm gonna take this smoke color. It's gonna be like a black brown on my skin tone, I think. I'm taking that on an angle brush and I'm stamping that into the lash line. I just basically wanna use this, following the shape that we did with the first shadow and the second shadow, where we made it into that sort of sloped wedge shape. And I'm just pressing it. I'm stopping just before the outer edge of my lash line because I don't want it to come out too far and do that droopy thing on the corners. I'm going to take a mix of these two colors and just lightly tap it over top to diffuse that line. So even just having that bit of dark liner, as you can see, I think bringing it into the inner corner and then making it thick on the outer corner like this with this light part still on my lid, that's just the concealer by the way, I haven't put anything on it yet. You can see how it, it pulls the outer corner of this eye up a little bit. It, it doesn't make it look any less round, because I like the roundness of my eyes, but it just sort of makes it look a little bit more upward turned. I think that it, it makes a huge difference, and this is three eyeshadows. You could put your mascara on and do your skin and good to go from here. Back to my palette, I'm going to move to a flat shaped brush and take the light color, the beige. I'm going to pop this on my lid. I hope this isn't too pigmented. Okay, this is perfect. I was scared it was gonna be like a white, but it's like actually a true like skin tony beige color. It's actually pretty similar to the concealer, maybe a little bit. Actually, I don't know. I think it's similar to the concealer. I don't know, it's just kind of like a, a skin tone color. On me, it's a skin tone color, but I think it's meant to be like one of those universal skin tone colors. Obviously people darker than me and beyond, this would be more of a highlight. On me, it actually looks Surprisingly more like my skin color than I thought it would. That's it in the pan, and that's it on my lid. So, I'm surprised in a good way. 
I'm using this on a flat brush and I'm pressing it right along the socket line. And I wanted to make like a super subtle, not even really a cut crease, but you can see a clear difference between dark socket color and then the light lid color. That's nice. That's a really nice like nude color on me. Huh. Am I gonna say it? Should I address the elephant in the room? I've never used this before. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! I said it. Per usual. I'm just going back to my fluffy, fluffy blending brush. Buffing the edge of that out. I feel like that part brings this to life. Because now you've done the darkest of dark parts along the lash line. And you've done the lightest of light parts on the lid. That's what brings like that super contrast. And it makes things look really blended. Dramatic, yes. But for a brown smoky eye like... You can only get so dramatic. I just really like how that gives a very soft cut crease. And because everything's matte, there's like no distractions. It's just all there, all blended. And using a nice flat brush is what allows you to get that really nice curve along the eyeball, basically. I have some liquid liners here, and I don't know if I feel like I should use them, but I really want to. There's a brown one and a black one, and I have like six different black liquid liners on the go right now. And I only have one brown liquid liner on the go right now. And I don't use brown liquid liner that often, but this just, I wanna use it. So the brown one's called Super Brown. Let's take it for a spin. I swatched it on my hand and it looks like a really warm brown, which is actually really nice. The other brown liners that I have dry down to like a off black, which I also like. This being like such a warm brown, I don't know if it's gonna show up, but I'm gonna try it just a little bit. I mean, perhaps I should let it dry, but I feel like it's lighter than the darkest eyeshadow, so I don't know if there's much point. It's a really nice color, but it's... you can't see it. <laughs> but this is good to know. This is nice. I'm gonna use the black one, though, just to do a bit of liner. The black one is called... Panther. I wanted to do a wing, but I feel like I shouldn't. I did a wing in my last video, and... No, I'm gonna keep it soft. Should I do a wing? Ah! I'm gonna do a wing. <laughs> now I'm just going over the edge of the wing just to soften it so it doesn't look like a super harsh difference between liner and eyeshadow. So that's nice. At first I did the wing and I was like, oh, I regret it, but now I'm looking at it in my screen and I'm like, yeah, no, that, I think that was the right decision. The wing is a bit long, but I feel like I just can't help myself. It was bound to go there. And now it's kind of like a smoky liner with a brown smoky eye, but that's totally cool. So I'm gonna pop some mascara on. This is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes Mascara. This is the one thing I tried from Charlotte Tilbury that I don't know how I feel about. And I think it's just because my natural eyelashes are kind of garbage. This is meant to be quite a like, lengthening and curling mascara that you can also add like a lot of volume with quite easily and I just find it's too heavy for my lashes like my lashes are just too wimpy. The wand is very unique. Let me show ya. Right so it looks like this and it's flat from one side with these long teeth and then from the front it's hollow and there's that big hole where a lot of product can collect right but it's so that I think when you apply it from the front like this you're putting lots of product on, and then you can flip it and comb it through. I just find it is too heavy for my eyelashes. Or maybe it's not my eyelashes, maybe I'm the problem and I'm expecting too much from my little wimpy eyelashes. <laughs> I'm gonna put false lashes on over top anyway, but for the sake of a full face of Charlotte Tilbury, we have to do Charlotte mascara as well. I do appreciate what the formula is about, I just think it's not for me. Lashes. I'm using some Tati lashes, and these are TL9. In the last couple videos, I have cut my lashes in half. Um, and I went through a little bit of, like, a thing with it. And I do really like a half lash, but I also like a full lash. So, I'm not cutting these in half, but what I am going to do is just snip a little bit off the outer corner. The shape of the lash is already a little bit longer on the outside, so it's another one of those lash shapes that complements something that's like winged and turned up at the ends. I think I'm actually going to snip one of the shorties from the inner corner off so that they're still nice and long. We're not losing any length on the outer corner, but it's still going to fit my eye. I used to pride myself on never having to trim my lashes because like, oh, my, my lash line's just wide enough. Like, it just... It always fits. <laughs> I look back at some pictures of my makeup and I'm like, 
That lash is too big for your eye. Like, just trim it. I'm sticking it on from the center first. With the outer edge. Hello. I actually want to prop it up a little bit away from my lash line. There's actually a big gap in between my lash line on the top and the false lash. And then with the inner corner, I'm going to get it nice and close. It's going to look a little bit silly while the glue is still wet and white because it ruins the illusion. You can only do this if you have loads of dark along your lash line and an eyeliner that's black that you can go in and kind of patch it up where you need to. Maybe you'll be able to see better on this side because it's like facing the camera. But I'm sticking it on from the middle first. And on this side, just because I'm right-handed, I'm going to do the inner corner first and stick it down. So it's nice and tight and close. And then switching to the outer corner, prop it up. So you can, well, can you see? I hope you can see how far away from my lash line that actually is. And again, doing this with a lash that's already shaped longer on the outer corner, it's just going to favor this effect. And then as it's drying, you just want to kind of lift them up a little bit. This eye is giving Sleepy Hollow because the lash wants to lay down on the inner corner. So let's not do that, please. Go back to my liquid liner. I just want to use the very tip of it and just fill in that space. Fill in any space in between your lash line and the false lash. You need a, a small tip felt liner, which is something with a really tiny tip that you can get right in behind your lashes and underneath the lash band. And just black it out so that the, the distance between isn't as obvious. There you go. This is like the catfish eye. <laughs> this is the cat eye, but this is the catfish eye because basically pulled out every trick in the book to make my eye shape look different than it is. And it looks good. So anyway, uh, let's move on to my skin and then afterward I can show you my little tips for the lower lash line too. I'm going to use the Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's like a blurring primer illuminator, but it has a teensy bit of coverage in it. And again, as I said at the beginning, I'm oily, so I have to be careful with how much of something like this I use, but I am gonna just put it on the outside of my face. It's number five, tan. I'm gonna buff it in with a brush, a MAC 159 brush, it looks like this. It just gives my skin a really nice glow and that little bit of color in it also just lightly evens everything out so I don't have to use as much foundation, which is nice. So if you have dry skin or normal skin, you like it really quite glowy, you could just go crazy with it and you'd have a really nice glow underneath your foundation, which is really nice. For foundation, I'm going to use the Airbrush Flawless Finish. And this is like a long wear foundation. I'm in the shade 9, cool. I'm going to take a pump and a half. So that's the color. It, this foundation also smells amazing. It's not an aggressive smell, but it's there. Like, you can tell it's there. And I'm doing most of the coverage on my cheeks because that's where I have the most uh, discoloration. So that's where I have a, my beard hair grows. That's where, like, I get lots of redness and texture. So, like, I am mostly am doing this on my cheeks. I would describe this foundation as a medium to full coverage. The finish, I think, is like a natural satin finish. So it's not glossy and it's not matte. I think the longest I wore it for was seven hours and it didn't come off. I mean, wearing a mask and that business out in the world, it actually stayed. You know, it came off on the bridge of my nose from my mask rubbing against it, but the normal lines that you get on your cheeks from wearing a mask and like moving it around and stuff, I didn't really get. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't look heavy, but it definitely covers your skin. If I had one thing I wanted to change about it, it would be the shade range. When they came out with this foundation, I think a focus of theirs was a bigger shade range. The shade range is, is pretty good, um, but it's not where it needs to be. So number nine, this one, is like a cool toned foundation which is meant to be more red undertones, which in my face I find that I do have a bit more red undertones. And this for a cool tone foundation, I disagree. I feel like the undertone in this is definitely more golden, which I would typically call cool. On the Charlotte Tilbury website it says cool undertones were meaning more pink or red. So this being a cool tone foundation and seeing how golden it is makes me feel like they need more shades, or more neutral shades at least. The texture of it, and the long wear of it, made up for that for me. I'm going to go back to the Magic Away Concealer. This one is number five, medium. 
I didn't choose this color for myself, this was sent to me, but I've tried it before and it is quite brightening, but I like it. So you can see, it was like quite bright when I first put it on. It blends out really, really nicely, and it's kind of sheer. I really like how it looks. Before I set my under eyes or anything though, I just want to finish up my lower lash line. Get a nice close look at the skin this way as well and see that it's not like super full coverage but it's really nice and glowy. And yeah, once we powder it down, it's it doesn't move. So I'm just gonna go back to the eyeshadow palette and not the darkest brown, the second darkest brown. And I want to press that right into the lower lash line. And I just press it on and then I'm going back to a pencil shaped brush and just sort of smoothing it over. Because that concealer is damp, it's going to grab onto that eyeshadow really well, but this makes the eye look quite big in terms of like bringing more roundness back to the lower lash line. Not only looks elongated outward, but also downward. This is a version of that sort of feline eye. And then when you add a little bit of smoke to the lower lash line, it just, it makes it exactly that, like more of a smoky eye. So I couldn't help myself with the cat eye thing and I added a little bit of that brown liner in Super Brown and I just made a small little extension on the inner corner of my, uh, of this eye. I'm just gonna do the same on this eye. Now we have the wing on the inner corner and I feel like doing that little wing with a brown liner and shadow instead of a black makes it look a little bit softer but still like super intense. Now the eyes are done, I'm gonna set my under eyes. I've had my hands all over my face but... And I'm gonna use the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Imagine I've hit pan, that's how much I love this powder. <laughs> this is in medium, so number two. On a 240 brush. By Mac. I got quite a lot, but that's because I, I normally would bake my under eyes with a loose powder, but I don't have a Charlotte loose powder, so. But this is like quite, you get a lot of product when you swirl your brush around in it. In theory, what I'm doing is actually baking, just using a brush, just not on a sponge. There's only three shades in this powder, and I would say if they added two more, this would be a perfect powder. Like, I'd have no critiques about it. It's like a blotting powder, but because it has this much kickback, you can pick up quite a lot of product with a brush. It's smoothing, like it's really smoothing actually. So it, it hides texture really, really well. So I think that they should do a medium tan, one in between the dark and medium, and then a darker one as well. It's super sheer of a powder, so it's obviously meant to be very universal, but I just think there could be a little bit more. Because this medium one is really nice for my under eyes, but all over my face it is a little bit light, but um, I don't think Charlotte Tilbury has a pressed powder foundation. So this is the only pressed powder I think that they do, and it's beautiful, but I just think I'm gonna wipe off the extra from my under eye because I don't, it's, I put a lot. Um, I need some bronzer, clearly. And I think my favorite thing that I've ever used from Charlotte Tilbury is the bronzer, <laughs> which is such a weird thing to say because her lipsticks are obviously iconic, but the bronzers are just, they do something to me. They're just so nice. So this is the airbrush bronzer, and this is the shade 3 Tan of four shades. So it looks pretty dark. It's quite sheer, so it's very buildable. And the, the compact size is just absolutely gorgeous. And it's nice and heavy. It looks kind of like a seashell to me. It's a nice big mirror and a big compact. I'm taking the Zoeva 126 Lux Cheek Finish Brush and this bronzer, and I'm just gonna start building it up. I didn't put as much of that um, finishing powder on the outside of my face because I knew I was gonna use this bronzer in combination with it. So I'm kind of using the bronzer to set the outside of my face. I just feel like the color of this is really nice for my skin tone. And I like that it's sheer, but you get so much product in a compact like this. And this mirror size and the compact and everything is just like, it's very nice. Bringing the bronzer up nice and high so that I can link it to the outer corner of the eyeshadows too. And this just kind of marries the two really nicely. I want to get some blush on. I'm going to use one of the blushes from their new collection, the Walk of No Shame Cheek to Cheek blush. It's like a berry colored blush, but they have like, the whole thing is shimmery and then there is like a kind of highlighty tone in the middle. I'm gonna use that. Oh, this is pretty. It's like a plum colored blush, I guess, with a slightly golden sheen. Actually, it's more of like a violet sheen. Oh, that's really pretty. 
looks not how I was expecting it to look. <laughs> I thought it would be more of like a reddish brown, but it's more of like a plum with a pink reflect in it. I'm running that across the bridge of my nose too. I want to put just a little bit of highlight on my nose. This is the first thing I ever heard of from Charlotte Tilbury. And I was like, oh, that looks nice, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. They've since extended the shade. This is Film Star Bronze and Glow Medium Dark is the one. And I'm going to take the highlight, which is this golden corally color. And I just want to pop a little bit right at the tip of my nose. Just a little bit. Not too much. All right, and lastly, I don't have a lip liner from Charlotte Tilbury, which is very odd because I thought that I did, but I don't. <laughs> I cannot find one for the life of me. I think I might have given it away to someone. I just popped on some brown lip liner. This is Cork from MAC, and now I'm just gonna pop lipstick on. This is Pillow Talk, just the original. This is like way more pink than I would normally go, but we're gonna try it. You know what? For like a pinky nude, I know this is like Charlotte Tilbury's most popular lipstick, but for a pinky nude, this is actually really nice. I think with the blush and because the eye is so warm and neutral, like it works really, really well. But that being said, that th that was the final step. Oh my god, no, I forgot. This, this is the f the real deal. This is some serious, serious setting spray. Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And this stuff is, makes your makeup bulletproof. <laughs> This is actually really, really nice. I knew it was gonna be nice because I've been using some Charlotte stuff as I said for the last couple months. So I'm I'm glad you got to see it all in action. I got to talk through the process with you. But yeah, that completes today's video. I hope you really enjoyed watching me create this full face. Turned it really, really well. Love a feline eye and something nice and neutral and smoky. I hope you picked up a couple tips along the way and maybe saw some products in action that you were curious about. If you enjoyed watching today's video, I would ask that you please subscribe, hit that that button down below. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel, so it'd be really appreciated. Give me a thumbs up, and please, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram. All the details for today's video and everything that I use in terms of, like, shades will all be listed in the description box. As I said, I really like Charlotte Tilbury's products. I like where they're going with the brand, and I like seeing that they are growing and expanding as time goes on. So, products are really good. They speak for themselves. That's everything for today. Thanks for watching again. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon.